वेलकम बैक टू वेब टेक्नोलॉजी कोर कॉन्सेप्ट्स एट लर्निंग जर्नल इन दी अर्लियर वीडियोज वी अकॉम्पलिश दी फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ गिविंग अ सर्च इंजन फ्रेंडली यू आर एल टू अर वेबसाइट द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी वॉन्ट टू डू इज टू रिप्लेस दिस आई पी एड्रेस विद अ मीनिंगफुल डोमेन नेम वेल दैट्स एन ईजी थिंग टू डू बट बिफोर दैट लेट्स फाइंड अ गुड नेम फॉर आर वेबसाइट वॉट नेम डू यू वॉन्ट टू गिव वॉट एवर नेम यू आर आई वैट इट मस्ट बी अ यूनिक नेम अक्रॉस द इंटरनेट No one else should be using that name for their website. That's a complex requirement, and hence there is a commercial part of the domain names. If you want to give a unique name to your website, you need to follow these steps. Search for domain name availability. I mean, nobody should have already taken that name. Pay and register the domain name. That means no one else can take that domain name after your registration. And finally, use it for your website. Let's start with the first thing. Many companies allow you to search for the available domain names. If someone else has not already registered the domain, they offer you to register it in your name. Let's do that. Let's try searching with the help of GoDaddy domain name search. I want a name as Math Magic. Let me explore that. Okay. Someone has already taken mathmagic.com but what is this the list of domain name extensions it shows a bunch of domain name extensions here .in .co .info .com .education and many more what are these extensions and what is the purpose of having these extensions i mean i wanted a name as mathmagic where do this .com and other extension come into picture let's try to understand that We already have millions of websites on the internet and thousands of new sites are being registered every day. Everyone needs a name, right? And this ever growing requirement to create a unique websites causes a bunch of problems. Let me talk about a couple of those problems. It is a big problem to give a unique but meaningful name to everyone. There are always more than one parties that would be interested in the same name. For example, I am interested in math magic. but someone else has already taken it what can we do to help this situation think about the list of domain names that are already registered there were more than 350 million of such names by the end of 2017 and that number is still growing who will manage such extensive database and how can we simplify that problem these two problems are at the core of the domain name system how do we solve it The problem is taken up by the IETF which stands for Internet Engineering Task Force and they developed a specification and standard for the domain name system. They came up with an excellent idea of a hierarchical decentralized naming system for computers and other services that are connected to the internet. Let's try to understand that system at a high level. Every computer or service that is connected to the internet is assigned a unique domain name and an IP address. This mapping along with the necessary information is stored in a dedicated system called a domain name server. The domain name follows a hierarchical naming separated by a dot symbol. The rightmost part of the domain is a top level domain or a TLD. Then comes the actual name of your domain. And finally, you have an optional subdomain name. These three parts are separated by the dot symbol. That's it. The DNS system is a complicated thing to understand. However, at this stage, the above two statements are more than enough to understand the core concept behind a DNS system. You might be wondering how this system helped to solve the two problems that we talked about earlier. Let's try to understand that part. The first problem has a simple solution. I wanted a name as math magic however when i searched for it i realized that the mathmagic.com is already registered by some other person or company mathmagic.com is not available and i can't do anything about it however i still have a bunch of other extensions or tlds i can try with mathmagic.net mathmagic.org mathmagic.edu and so on If I'm looking to register this name with specific relevance to a country then I can use a country code based TLD for example mathmagic.in will make more sense for the indian audience similarly mathmagic.us will make more sense for the us market 
However, there is an important point to note here. We have a predefined set of TLDs that is maintained by the ICANN, which stands for Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. You can choose one of the TLD from that list. You can't come up with your own top level domain name and use it to register your website name. Great. One last thing. The TLDs are classified into two groups. GTLD which stands for Generic Top Level Domain and CCTLD which stands for Country Code Top Level Domain. If you want to reflect your website for a specific country, you might want to register a domain name with the CCTLD. For example, Amazon.com has a country specific domain for India as Amazon.in. If you don't want to reflect your website name in a specific country, you should favor a GTLD. The .com top level domain happens to be the oldest and the most popular GTLD. However, you can get a list of all the available GTLD at the ICANN website. The idea is to pick up a GTLD that makes more sense for your business or the organization. Great! By adding a TLD to the domain name system, IETF managed to solve the first problem to some extent. The TLD makes it possible for more than one parties to register the same name with different extensions. I can't get mathmagic.com but I can still get mathmagic.fun, mathmagic.school, right? The next problem with the domain name system is the sheer size of the database. The IETF had the challenge to design a system that can handle an ever-growing volume of the registered domain names. And they addressed this problem by defining a distributed domain name server. What is that? Let me explain that in two parts. What is a domain name server or a DNS? And what do we mean by the distributed DNS? The domain name server is nothing but a program which holds information about a bunch of domain names. We can send our queries to the DNS and it responds back with an answer to the query. For example, I can query the DNS for the address www.learningjournal.guru and it returns an IP address for the host machine. That's it. That's what the browser needs to send the request to the web server. Now let's come to the distributed thing. So the idea is to create multiple domain name servers across the globe and distribute the work among those servers. What does that mean? Let's try to understand that with an example. Let's assume I submit a request for www.learningjournal.guru to my browser. That request goes to the DNS resolver. The DNS resolver is a software service that is managed and offered by your internet service provider. The job of the DNS resolver is to find the IP address for learningjournal.guru. Now, the DNS resolver sends this request to the nearest DNS root server. There are a bunch of DNS root servers across the globe. And they are operated and managed by various vendors under the guidance of ICANN. The DNS root server does not know the IP address for the learningjournal.guru. However, it knows the details of the name server for the .guru TLD. I mean, the DNS root server returns an address for another DNS server that manages the details for the .guru TLD. Great! The DNS resolver now sends the request to the .guru TLD name server. The .guru TLD might not even know the exact IP for the learningjournal.guru. However, it knows the address of the name server that manages the learning journal name. So let's assume it says, please go to the following IP. Now the DNS resolver reaches out to the given IP address. And that's the name that actually knows the IP address for the learning journal.guru. So it returns the IP address to the DNS resolver. The DNS resolver returns the IP address to the browser and finally, browser reaches out to the web server of the learningjournal.guru. Great! I hope you understand the domain name system. Let me summarize. The domain name system has three major components. The domain name standard to define a domain name record. This is nothing but the domain name data. The domain name servers. These are nothing but a software service that is provided by a bunch of vendors under the control of ICANN. The domain name resolvers. These are also a software service that is offered by your ISP. When you register a domain, 
your registrar will create a domain name record in the name server for the TLD. In case of my example, my registrar has built a data record for learning journal in the name server of .guru TLD. My domain name registrar also maintains a DNS that actually stores the IP address of the www.learningjournal.guru web server. And as an owner of the learningjournal.guru, I have to create that record using my registrar's website. Great, let's assume that I already purchased a domain name from godaddy.com. In that case, godaddy.com is my domain registrar and mathmurka.com is my domain name. Since the registration is already complete, my registrar must have already created a record in the .com TLD name server. I have already purchased the domain name mathmurga.com and the registration process is already completed. Now all I need to do is to create an address record using my domain name registrar's website. Let's do that. First thing is to log in to your domain name registrar's website. Then go to the DNS management console. You will see many records. However, there are two essential records. A record and C name record. The A record is the address record. If you already have an A record, you need to edit that. If you don't have an A record, then add a new A record and fill in the necessary values. The most important value is the IP address of your website. Save it and done. The next record you must edit is the CNAME record. The name field requires the subdomain name. You are using the most common subdomain www. That's it. Save it, wait for 5 minutes and check a website using the domain name. Great, domain name system is doing its work. Great, in this lesson, we learned about domain name system and also learned how to create an address record to attach a domain name to your website. Once all that is complete, you can access your website using your domain name and there is no need to remember the IP address. A typical website will have a home page. The home page is the default page that opens when you type the domain name for the website. Great! See you again in the next video. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.